Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel where all things tech are what we're about. Commentary, reviews, and critique. For my first video, I'd like to introduce you to one of my favorite Linux distributions. And released recently, um, uh, the developers of Linux Mint celebrated the release of Linux Mint 17.1, um, version name Rebecca. Uh, Linux Mint is a derivative of Ubuntu, which in of itself is a, initially started out as a derivative of Debian, but now Ubuntu seems to be moving further and further away from their Debian roots, but that's for another video altogether. Linux Mint improves on Ubuntu by adding a lot more polish, a much better out-of-box experience in my opinion, and uh, just these little touches that just make it, uh, in my uh, opinion, a better introduction to Linux, in particular for the new user coming from OS X or Windows. Um, what we have in front of you is the initial screen that uh, user will see after installing Linux Mint Rebecca version 17.1. The welcome screen is very complete with a lot of good tools and information to get things started and I would recommend that new users explore this. It's uh, not just here for window dressing, it's actually quite useful. Uh, things such as the restore data, that's a very special, it brings up a, uh, a, um, a backup and restore tool. Uh, Linux Mint in their philosophy differs a little bit from Ubuntu in terms of operating system upgrades and uh, hopefully in the future I'll be able to make a video showing you how to do it uh, the Linux Mint way within Linux Mint. That will probably not happen until their next release. Uh, one of Linux Mint's shining stars is the software manager. Anybody who says that Linux is difficult has not used Linux in quite a while. Linux is quite uh, simple now, at least on the top. On the surface, definitely. Um, the average user would never even have to touch the command line, to be honest with you. But the power is still there of the command line and the configuration options for the power user. And this is the beauty of Linux Mint. It can both be a tool in the hands of a power user and a welcome desktop in the hands of a newbie or even a somewhat advanced user. Here we have the software manager. Uh, all the software that's available in the repositories that come loaded with Linux Mint, not the packages, the repositories, they are listed here. If I wanted to type in, for example, Thunderbird. Thunderbird is a fantastic email client put out, I believe, by the Mozilla Group. Uh, something I use in Windows. We see here that it's available. The green check mark will mean that it's already been installed. If we click on it, we come up with a blurb, and this will happen with any package within the software manager, which gives us not only a rating with all these re uh, user reviews, uh, but also details with respect to, you know, impact on packages, uh, the size of disk space, and whatnot. Uh, installing from the software manager is extremely simple. Uh, you go in, let's say I would search and I see Opera. Hmm, maybe I want Opera on my system. No problem. Read the blurb. Not installed. Click install. That's all I have to do. And as we see down below, the installation is ongoing. Okay. And as that's completed, Opera will show up in our start menu or our program or file menu or whatever you wish to call it. I do have to point out that Linux Mint comes in two main versions with two different GUIs. One is Cinnamon. This is the Cinnamon release. I've grown very fond of Cinnamon. Cinnamon has a lot of the features of the start menu you would find in, for example, Windows 7. But it's on steroids. There's a lot of different things you can do with Cinnamon, not just with the Start menu, but with the Desktop menu, as we see here, as I right-click. Um, and we have a lot of different options here, uh, including options to add desklets, which is adding little uh, software programs, little pieces of software on your screen. Applications, for example, running such as a clock, uh, system information tool, whatever. 
you know, just to decorate. And that's the beauty about Linux. If you want to take your time, uh, something like Linux Mint will allow you to create an, a, a, a PC experience which is tailored to exactly how you want it. And in a future video, I'll probably go through a few aspects of uh, how flexible Linux, Linux really is in that regard. Um, so, as you see, Opera's already been installed. If you want to remove it, it's just a simple act of clicking the button. Now, if we go to the menu, and I'll go through this in a minute, you'll notice if we go to Internet, Opera's here. Simple as that. Opera starts in a flash, and here we have Opera working. So that's the software center. Now, let's go to the menu. Uh, the menu on the left side includes these favorites, uh, quit, which will send me to, you know, the shutdown, suspend, restart uh, menu. We have log out, which will log out of this session and this user. Lock the screen, which is exactly what it says it's going to do. We have the file manager, which I believe is Nemo. There's a default file manager in uh, Mint, and it comes with 2.44 out of the box, at least the ISO that I downloaded. Um, opens directly into your the user folder, and uh, these folders are created by default uh, for every user, desktop documents, downloads, music, etc., etc. It uh, goes a long way in helping the user organize their files. Um, going back to the menu, we have uh, system settings. We have the terminal, of course, the almighty terminal, if you were there, and the command line. We have um, software manager, which we just saw, and we have the default browser for uh, Linux Mint, which is actually um, Firefox. But as we've shown uh, just earlier, um, default doesn't mean the only. Uh, you have a lot of software that is available uh, with a few clicks. You can install tons of software in Linux Mint. And then we have the system settings, the control center. The control center allows you to basically um, configure uh, many aspects of the system without having to resort to the command line uh, that uh, Linux was famous or infamous for uh, many years ago. Uh, there's so many things that can be done here uh, for the average user. Um, I can change my uh, screen resolution. I can add printers. I can, see, there we are. There are no printers configured with the printer add tool. I can um, <clears throat> adjust my sound. I have system info. And I have this beautiful tool called Driver Manager. Need a root password to run. Driver Manager will look through your system to see what um, hardware you're running that may have proprietary drivers available uh, for installation if the user wishes to do so and stop using or set aside the open source alternatives uh, that are probably running the hardware at boot up uh, with Linux. For example, I have a, an NVIDIA card, an NVIDIA graphics card. It will probably run, uh, as I'm starting, you will see that the Nouveau driver is being run. That is the open source NVIDIA driver. Well, Linux Mint, as well as Ubuntu and most of the derivatives of Ubuntu, have a tool that will automatically recognize that you're running a card that may have, or a piece of hardware, in this case a video card, that may have a proprietary driver available as well. Um, potential advantages of a proprietary driver are uh, increased performance and better support, more um, options, configuration options and whatnot. So it's a good thing that this tool is here. There's no need to go search out the driver yourselves. Let the tool do it. It will actually indicate what driver is being used and it will tell you which driver is recommended. And you can choose and the tool will update uh, to show you the latest drivers available when that happens. Um, but this is something that I want to show you right now. With respect to keeping Linux Mint up to date, very simple. If you look at the bottom right here on the taskbar, you'll see this little shield. 
It's an update manager. Linux Mint has an update manager. Automatically tells you what updates are available. For example, I'm seeing that now a new version of Cinnamon is out. I have not updated this since I installed the virtual and the virtual machine. I just want to show you how simple it is. All these updates are available. They're categorized by level. Level 1 being very safe updates that you have no problem. Apply them as needed or just apply them. They're, you're good to go. As you go higher in number, the updates are more critical and closer and tied closer to uh, system uh, files. For example, bind, bin utils, um, core utils. As you go higher, cups, we saw that as for printing. As you go higher, you'll see you'll hit level 4 and 5. These are critical system components that you have to really think about. Um, and part of the reason that by default that they're not um, checked or indicated for upgrade, the, the checkboxes for upgrade or lift blank, is that um, uh, for users in general, <clears throat> in particular newer users, if your system is working as it should and there's no real blurring issues or security issues, um, some of these updates you might want to leave it alone until such time as uh, it's indicated by either the developers or whatnot that hey you really need to get that done or the update manager will will check them off for you um, here we have the Linux kernel headers for development well, unless you're compiling your own kernels and whatnot that's not really needed it's unchecked level 5 of course Xorg server the whole graphical backend uh, back end to the graphical server that's uh, unchecked and dbus uh, that's another critical thing and the interesting thing about the update manager is it gives you a blurb if you click on for example WPA it will tell you what exactly this update this this uh, particular update is all about and a little blurb at the bottom um, user activities and events um, Xorg server Xorg that can be run inside of us at like Xnest unzip it'll tell you different things so you know exactly what you're getting um, <clears throat> In terms of performance, Linux Mint has been blistering. Uh, it's in a virtual machine running off of a Seagate 500 gig hard drive, not the fastest drive to today's standards, but uh, Linux Mint is quite snappy. Uh, I have run it on actual hardware, and it is very fast, in particular, of course, if an SSD is used. Um, my Linux box has a 120 gig boot drive um, on an SSD, and I put my files my home directories on a spinner drive. Uh, that could be something you could think about uh, to increase performance without having to outlay lots of cash for a large SSD. Um, Linux Mint um, has comes with a large selection. Oh, I should call it. I wouldn't call it large. I stand corrected. It comes with a very focused collection of software uh, accessories. You won't see long 50 different applications doing the same thing here. It's usually one application that does something very good. Um, <clears throat> image viewer, thumb viewer, GIMP, of course, uh, image editor, scan, LibreOffice draw, which if you drop down here is part of the LibreOffice suite, which thankfully is shipped with Linux Mint. Uh, so that's great. Internet, we have well, Firefox was here, Chromium and Opera weren't, so you can imagine without them we only had Firefox, HexChat, Pigeon Instant Messenger, Thund Thunderbird Mail, and Transmission, which is, I believe, a um, torrent client. And as we move further down, sound and video, we have VLC Media Player, another video, I believe this is, if I'm not mistaken, another video player, and um, Brassero, which is a burning application, very good one. Uh, and Banshee, which is a very, which is a, another uh, media player, very good one actually. So that's what's that's what's running, and uh, Banshee's still running. So as you can see, Linux Mint is quite special. Um, out of the box experience, I would have to rate it in the top three Linux distributions, right along with PC Linux OS and I would say PC Linux OS, potentially OpenSUSE, um, although OpenSUSE 
still has a few things you have to do to it as opposed to Mint where you just install and enjoy everything. Um, hardware recognition is first class. Um, tools for recognizing hardware are there in case. Um, options, it always gives the user options, what driver to install. Um, networking is quite uh, simple. You see we have network here. You can go through network setup and uh, get your Linux Mint box on a network quite easily um, if you want to like access shares on other computers and whatnot it's not very difficult um, configurability is excellent quite excellent these are all the preferences your panel password and keys personal file sharing you know um, excellent uh, it probably requires Samba uh, but that's quite easy to install. So all in all, I would give Mint out of 10 a good solid 9. Um, if I would take away anything from Mint, um, I'm more a fan of a rolling release. I have used Arch Linux for quite a while and love it. And there is a version of Linux Mint based on Debian, uh, more closely tied to Debian, which is uh, Linux Mint LMDE, which is a rolling release. It's, I would say, 90% of the experience of pure Linux Mint. Not quite there yet, but it's it's still quite good. Um, but uh, for people out there who want to get their feet wet in Linux, or people who just want a Linux system that's solid, reliable, dependable, great support, fantastic community, and have their hardware up and running as quickly and as seamlessly as possible, very hard to choose anything other than Linux Mint. And that's my review. Hope you enjoyed it. And if there's any questions or comments, please be free. Thank you. Take care.